I am Anurag Sokhi, a PhD student working in Professor Shengshan Li's lab at National Tsinghua University. And uh, today I would like to introduce our work on 3 gigahertz bulk acoustic wave resonators integrated with the CMOS in a single chip solution. So the brief outline of our talk is introduction where I will give a motivation for our work, then the review of the prior state of art works, then the composite F bars what we have designed and then the oscillator system and finally we will conclude. So the main motivation for this work is we are increasingly surrounded by smart devices uh, which are communicating with all, almost all of our surrounding. So the communication aspect has been increasing and one of the example is a modern cell phone. So we see the logic board for a modern cell phone uh, and uh, we can see that uh, the traditionally the MEMS devices has dominated in the filters and oscillators. So we see uh, F bars and saw as a front end filters for band selection and recent trends have seen that uh, modules have been used for the RF front end. So we see a power amplifier power amplifier and F bar module for the LTE mid band and the power amplifier and the SMR module for the high band. And there are a plethora of sensors in the cell phones including gyroscopes, pressure sensors and recently there have been a prototype launched for the piezoelectric based gas sensors which we expect to be uh, integrated in the future devices. So a piezoelectric integrated with a circuit has a uh, provides us with not only a small form, uh, sorry, small form factor but an increasing co uh, functionality. So we move on to the review. So the first one is a symmetric F bar which is used by Avago. It has a piezoelectric layer sandwich between the two electrodes and the advantage of this method is you get a suppression of even harmonics and you get a higher KT square that is a coupling coefficient as your device response is dominated only by the piezoelectric layer and the disadvantage is because it is just the piezoelectric layer which dominates the temperature coefficient is not that good. So the second one is an asymmetric design, uh, it, this uses a silicon nitride additional layer. So this uh, silicon nitride, uh, the introduction of the additional layer can be used for temperature compensation or to enhance the mechanical properties. Uh, that is the higher Q. But the drawback is the reduction in the coupling coefficient or KT square because now your response is dominated by the additional layer also. So we move on to the composite F bar. So in this work we can consider the types of asymmetric F bars. So you have the asymmetric electrodes where you have a top electrode and bottom electrode which are either of different geometric proportions or are of different materials. The, the second one is additional layer on the electrode as we can see here and the third is a additional layer between the piezoelectric and the electrode. So this additional layer has to be a dielectric and this can be thought of as a capacitive driving for the piezoelectric layer. Now this work deals with the second case which is a single crystal silicon. Uh, layer added at the bottom. This uh, So our goal is to enhance the mechanical property that is getting a high Q thus improving the oscillator performance. Now the additional materials that you can add to the device can be silicon oxide for temperature compensation, silicon nitride is for passivation for use in sensors or single crystal silicon as we will be using for enhancement of quality factor. Now the material stack for our work can be uh, is con having aluminum top electrode, aluminum nitride piezoelectric layer, then molybdenum, uh, molybdenum uh, bottom electrode and single crystal silicon base layer. So this is the model for our design. We are using Avago's pentagon shape and the active area is roughly 100 by 100 micrometers square. Uh, the blue frame is basically an oxide frame which is a uh, result of the DRC limitations and the red is the molybdenum bottom electrode. 
Now we have done both 2D and 3D simulations in COMSOL to ascertain the device performance and we first see the case for the symmetric F bar with a 2D simulation. So we do an admittance versus frequency and we see a uh, fundamental mode at three, around 3.3 .3 gigahertz and if we do the same for a composite F bar, we see that there are multiple even and odd harmonics and the higher order mode corresponds to the 3.3 .3 gigahertz. The fundamental mode for composite F bar is somewhere around 600 megahertz. And this uh, harmonics are due to the acoustic mismatch due to addition of the single crystal silicon. Now the mode shape shows the thickness vibration with the displacement concentrating around the center. And we have selected the higher order mode to achieving higher coupling coefficient. Uh, this can be seen from the stress versus thickness distribution. So if we see that we get a maximum stress roughly around the center of the piezoelectric layer and you can see the correspondingly the displacements are maximum at the periphery. So this is the cross section of the Inventions fabrication platform. Uh, you have a MEMS handle wafer, then you have a single crystal silicon active area, then the bottom electrode piezo and the top electrode. And we have the TIG uh, via which is used for eutectic bonding between the MEMS and the CMOS wafer. So this not only provides an electrical connection but also a hermetic sealing. So and the bond parts are located on, on the CMOS wafer. So this is the SEM view of the fabricated uh, F bar. Uh, this is uh, after debonding. So as you can see, these are the bond pad, uh, sorry, bonding area for the eutectic bonds between MEMS and the CMOS. And you, you can see an isolation ring. This is used to isolate the bottom electrodes for different devices on the same die. So we use a standard one port measurement setup. Uh, in this, uh, GSG probes are calibrated using calibration substrate. And then our measure, uh, the device is measured using a network analyzer. The S parameters are then converted to Y or Z for further processing. So moving on to the D embedding, as we know, for any high frequency measurements, the parasitics are important uh, are going to affect your response. To get the true device response from the parasitics, we need to do a D embedding, and we have used an on chip, open, and short. So the de-embedding method is shown here. You have the Z de-embedded, which is one by Y device minus Y open, minus of one by Y short minus Y open. So you can think of the first term as a subtraction of the open and the second term as a subtraction of the short. So let's just move on the parasitic path that we have in our design. So we have the parasitics due to CMOS bond pads, the CMOS interconnect metal lines. Then you have the TIG via and the MEMS interconnect to the active area. So in this, uh, the de-embedding that we do, the, the parasitics that are removed are from the CMOS uh, probing pads, metal interconnects on the CMOS side, and the TIG via. The MEMS interconnects are not removed in this. So this was a trade-off as we have multiple devices and limited I.O. on the chip. So we use the same open and short to de-embedded multiple devices. But if you see the situation right now is like a traditional F bar which is directly probed by GSG uh, uh, probes and the interconnect parasitics can be included using the mod MBVD model. So this is the MBVD model which has been used largely, uh, which is widely used for piezoelectric devices. And we can split this into three branches. The first one is a motional branch, which has a motional inductance, resistance, and capacitance. The equations are shown to the left. Then you have a static branch, which is static capacitance and R0. So the static capacitance can be considered as a parallel plate capacitance because of the top and bottom electrodes. And R0 is a dielectric loss in the piezoelectric layer. Then you have the additional parasitics, which are the C series inductance, series resistance, and RP. Now, RP is introduced to model the loss in the single crystal silicon, 
uh, typically the RP value is much higher like in few kilo ohms. So now we move on to the Q measurement of our devices. Uh, so the Q is measured using the equation uh, which basically is extraction from the S11 measurements of your device. Now the advantage of this is you get a continuous value of Q versus frequency as can be seen in this graph. So we see that for our case at the resonance frequency of 3.264 gigahertz the quality factor is around 725 and at 3.292 it is around 512. So these are the loaded quality factors. To get an unloaded quality factor we use an equation where the loaded quality, uh, unloaded is Q loaded into 1 plus RS by RM where RS is the series parasitic resistance. So in our case it comes out to be around 1900. So now we compare with the previous works. So the reference 7 is Avago's pentagon design which is a symmetric F bar design. Reference 2 is a composite F bar using silicon nitride. So if we see that the uh, coupling coefficient is much higher for Avago as expected because it is dominated by aluminum nitride and it should be much closer to the intrinsic electromechanical coupling. For the composite works uh, we, we can see the second one has around 3.88 which is also higher but there are two reasons for this. This, uh, this work uses ZNO which has an intrinsically higher electromechanical coupling compared to aluminum nitride. And also the ratio of the, alum, uh, the piezoelectric to the composite in this work is more than 1 whereas in our work it is less than 0.25. So our response is severely limited by single crystal silicon. And we can see the two figure of merits, one which is KT square into Q and the second one is frequency into Q. So we see that uh, we have a better FOM1 and FOM2 compared to other composite works and we have a comparable FOM2 uh, uh, with Avago's symmetric F bar. So we move on to the oscillator system. So we use a standard Pierce inverter circuit for oscillator implementation. Now the C1 and C2 capacitances are used to implement the negative resistance. The equation is given by Gm by omega square C1 C2. And for Pierce uh, oscillator, the F bar is treated as an high Q inductor. So the resonance frequency is not at series resonance and can be given by this equation where CT is C0 plus uh, C1 and uh, C1 parallel C2. And the reason for selecting Pierce configuration was that the parasitics from MEMS or from the circuit do not load your C0 and they are absorbed by C1 and C2. So in this design we have used, tried to use the parasitics from MEMS and circuit to implement C1, C2 and additional 140 femtofarad capacitance has been added at C1 to make C1 and C2 of the same value. And the oscillation condition is the negative resistance should overcome the loss from the F bar and the reactance for the F bar which is inductive should be equal in magnitude to the capacitive reactance from the circuit. So now we go to the complex plane representation to get an optimum values. So here we see the variation with GM and so this is the increasing GM. We see that the negative resistance uh, for this, the blue is the loss from the F bar. So when your negative resistance is equal to the loss from the F bar your circuit can oscillate and this is called as a GM critical. The second is the GM optimum which is the maximum negative resistance that the circuit can achieve. Now we see the effect of C0. If we have any parasitics on C0, the, the negative resistance that your circuit can achieve is reduced. So now except for reducing C1, C2, there is no way to achieve a higher negative resistance. And now if you go for C1, C2. Uh, if you decrease C1, C2, you see the negative resistance decreases and we want to decrease C1, C2 because this ensures that you have a lower GM for the same negative resistance. So for simulation case, we have an RPA which is the equivalent resistance at anti-resonance of around 1000 ohms which corresponds to a startup current of around 0.4 microampere. And 
in for a simulation we see the gm critical the id is around 0.45 microampere so we satisfy both the negative resistance requirement and the startup current so this is the optical view of the de bonded cmos wafer we see it has an active area of 55 by 85 and we see the eutectic bond pads for to bonding with the mems wafer and we had uh, the dc operating conditions were as we had in simulations but we did not observe any oscillations so to debug this we move back to the complex plane representation so this is the simulation uh, results we had and in the measurements we find that the series resistance has increased so this would move the required negative resistance at minus around minus 4 but this still can be achieved by increasing the gm and another thing that we found was the rpa which is the equivalent resistance at parallel has decreased to around 400 so it has increased the startup current to around 1 milliampere so there is no way for us to satisfy both these conditions simultaneously uh, so the only solution is to increase c1 and c2 but in this design our focus was for the low power implementation so we had just used the parasitic capacitances so for conclusion uh, we have a composite f bar which has an q of 1933 and the resonance frequency around 3.264 gigahertz with a coupling coefficient of 2.2 percent and compared to the other composite f bar works it has a better figure of marriage one and two and the cf bar was integrated with the circuit uh, using the inventions platform but the oscillations were not realized due to the reduced rpa and increased series resistance so for the future work we we would like to reduce uh, series resistance. Now, in this case, again, it was a trade off as uh, we had multiple de designs. So, we used a uh, standard series interconnect and we did not use the wide uh, interconnect for a pentagon which at the base because we wanted it, the performance to be comparable to other designs. And uh, then we would like to use an RF substrate to tune the c1 c2 to realize the oscillator and secondly we think because of the increase in the resistance and the current requirement we would like to explore the use of a series oscillator and compare the overall system performance and we would like to acknowledge our sponsors specifically ieee ufc for the travel support thank you